it means that they've got to, given, to be given every other right under our constitution. And I, th I think that is not necessary, that is up to the people, of, to the community, to the government to decide which rights uh, can be given. Uh, and therefore it doesn't mean that it's, it's, you give a right and then you, give, you have to give everything away. I don't think that makes sense. It would be a vote catcher for the political parties if they play their cards right. But there's not many people involved, you know, maybe 800. There wouldn't be a big number added. But it could sway the vote either way, because in Gibraltar we're very much 50-50, so it can sway the vote. I think this next election is too soon. You need to do the groundwork and get people involved and try and get the older age group to come out to vote because many of those don't come and vote. So it might generate discussion, it might move the older people to come and vote as well, which is important, I think. I think with the uh, confusion that the panellist uh, changes has presented, uh, we have actually played uh, not the clip that, uh, in which the uh, former teachers discuss how uh, politics, um, or, or at least mm -hmm. how political awareness might be cultivated in school. But I can say, having interviewed them myself, that some of the things that both Ivan Navas and Liz Gonzalez said um, was that there is some material in school, but it's not, uh, a, a, you know, by any means a, a big curriculum uh, trying to inform uh, students uh, about political ideologies about the histories of the different parties. Is that, you know, what do you think about how you've been taught politics or at least how you've been prepared for a potential vote in school, James? Um, well, in sociology, um, we cover stuff like Marxism and feminism and different ideologies and stuff like that. Um, and it teaches us to be discerning because we're looking at criticisms and evaluating everything, so that would come into play when mm -hmm. deciding who to vote for. Um, I think political education comes, comes through most in history level, which I don't do personally, but I believe that's the case because they're, always, because they're talking about British politics, particularly in the 60s and, and since, the, since the Second World War. Mm -hmm. um, I think that were this to happen, it would, um, there would have to be a reshape of how we do PSHE and liberal studies. Mm -hmm. Uh, w with a curriculum focusing on getting, on getting a bit more knowledge on, on local issues and politics. Fair enough. What do you make of some of the comments that uh, that we heard there, Robert? Well, I. One of my main concerns, I have various concerns in relation to extending the vote to sixteen-year-olds. One of my main concerns is that 16, you know, I, 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 16 year olds, and it's a generalization because not all, but there are some 16 year olds who are not as mature as other 16 year olds. There are, and giving them the vote is giving them essentially the saying, you are now an adult, you are a mature person. And that can cause enormous parental problems and social problems at home. Mm -hmm. uh, what does a parent say to a 16-year-old who is going off the rails to try and put him back on the rails if he can turn around and say, I am now a mature adult and you cannot control me and I have the vote? And what does a parent say? Mm -hmm. What does a parent say? Well, if that's the case, you leave home. And then, what, the government gives them housing? Mm. I and mean, where do we go on well, that? You, but, you, but then, you know, let's, let's look at it, the wider debate that I was saying earlier. Mm. They've mentioned, the Chief Minister mentioned allowing driving and drinking. Mm -hmm. Well, those are serious decisions that have to be taken. How do we not allow them that? Mm -hmm. But what about other things? Do we allow them to go on jury service? Or don't we? Mm -hmm. eh? well, do we allow them to marry without parental control? I'm not saying we shouldn't, but the debate... The questions arise. That. But, do, you know, at the moment they're treated as young offenders if mm -hmm. they commit criminal offences, and apart from certain indictable offences that have 14 years or more maximum sentence, um, they have a maximum liability to be imprisoned if nothing else works for two years. Do they become I was criminalised as 16-year-olds? Yeah. So... It's not about voting. It's, it's, it is a much wider debate with far more social, con social implications than has been debated generally. And that is a process of consultation that has to be, take place. It's a process that we have to think about. Mm -hmm. And to do it in months before an election, I think, is irresponsible.
Irresponsible. Irresponsible, absolutely. Am I right in uh, thinking that generally soci our society at least, and I think in the UK, has been converging on 18 as the age of adulthood, as you have referred to there? You, you know, alcohol, cigarettes in the UK, you know, it extends to not being able to go into a tanning salon until you're 18. You can't actually go to, to a theatre of war until you're 18. This seems and you cannot be a criminal until you're 18. You can be a young offender, importantly. Yeah. Mm. So mm. Th it opens up a whole gamut of, of questions. That has to be looked at, in mm. my view. Mm. And I'm not, I'm not expressing a view whether we should or shouldn't lower it, mm. but it is just not giving them the vote. It mm. is actually giving 16-year-olds a whole gamut of responsibility, a whole gamut... Of, of, of whether the law should be changed to allow them. Mm. How do we tell a 16-year-old who has the vote, how does a politician tell a 16-year-old who has a vote, you cannot drive, mm. and I'm not going to change the law to allow you to drive, well, for Chief, example? The Chief Minister already intimated in that interview that uh, perhaps it was something that was going to be, that they'd have to need, uh, they need to look well, at. But... Are we ready for that? And that is the debate. What, what do you think about that specific issue, James? About the driving yeah. issue? Oh, um... As an idea, it's quite nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think giving people the opportunity to drive is, an, is a good idea, especially if the drinking age is at 18, because mm -hmm. people will get a couple of years to figure out the gravity of driving or what it means to have mm -hmm. a vehicle and taking it around Gibraltar and stuff. Practically, however, I think we have enough congestion and it, it's a bit impractical mm. as an idea. But yeah. it's also dangerous. I mean, insurers went insure... Well, in order to be insured under 25 is extremely expensive. Mm. And yeah. the reason for that is because under 25-year-olds, not 18, under 25-year-olds have a, a large number of accidents mm. and they don't want to insure them. Yeah. So I, that says a lot. I think it's only fair that um, I read out... Uh, a short piece on what the opposition's view is on this because we have heard from the chief minister and they've said that while in principle uh, they're not against the idea of reducing the voting age to 16 it should be the subject of considered debate and consultation among the community especially given that the initiative did not form part uh, as you pointed out Robert did not form part of the GSLP Liberal Manifesto. Mm -hmm. It adds that there's a lack of clarity as to whether the government intends to deal with the voting age alone or whether this will be a package of measures which changes how society views the legal entitlement of 16 and 17 year olds, uh, which is what we've been discussing. If you had to sort of put your hand in the fire, Robert, which, uh, which do you think it's going to be? Sorry, which... Do you think it's going to be just an issue uh, that, uh, as it plays out in the coming months? Is it we're going to deal with this as just uh, voting at 16 or is it going to be, uh, you know, is it going to be a broader question of are 16-year-olds adults now? As, well, 16-year-olds uh, have been referred to as young adults. Actually, it's, it's, it's young persons is mm -hmm. a normal word to say it because adulthood technically is not until the age is of 18. 18. Yeah. Um, anyway... Um, I think it's an opportunist, an opportunist move by the current government um, without due attention, thought or consultation, um, which shouldn't occur in the next few months. And I think it is a, a, an opportunism in politics that shouldn't exist in Gibraltar and we should have more maturity about it. So you think this is opportunistic on, Absolutely. on yes. the government's behalf? Totally. So you think that they, they think by, by doing this they can win the 16, 17-year-old vote? Well and also by sending them to internships in Washington two years ago. OK. Um, I've got some... Obviously, we don't have a member of the government to, to yeah. respond to that now. Well, that's but, their own fault, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, we do have some emails coming in. Uh, viewpoint at gbc.gi 266-200. Apologies for this being a short programme, but we will get through what we can in the time available. Uh, let's read out this from Des. If you want to see if 16s are ready to vote, all you need to do is come and stand outside the ICC at lunchtimes, during turn times, and you'll see 16-year-olds should not be voting, says Des. Uh, we'll go on to Elena, who says she believes that in a true democracy, the issue of voting at 16 can be resolved by calling a referendum uh, for people specifically aged 16 to 18 and let them decide. Uh, she thinks it should be their decision. Thank you, Elena. Let's move on to an email here from... Uh, Jonathan, he says, uh, he's of the opinion that uh, as a healthcare professional constantly making judgments of maturity in children around the age of 16, the legal age of consent for heterosexual age is 16, the legal age of ch child safeguarding and child protection is 18, 
voting age is set at 18 internationally at all advanced democracies. Mm -hmm. Child development is a biological process. Some points in a long email, um, which I think uh, are self-explanatory. Can um, I deal with a sexual problem? Please do. Issue? Uh, yes, um, the age of consent for sex is 16. I don't think that is a good argument to make in relation to allowing people to vote at 16. And the reason I say that is very simple. The reality is that there is sexual activity amongst young people well before 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And there, is, there has to be a practical age at which one says we have to decriminalise that activity. And what we can't do and we can't have is to fill our prisons with people who are, having, who, who are known to be having sex and by increasing the age to 18 or by reducing it further. So it's just a practical, in my mind, it's a practical age that has been there for mm. many, many, many moons because it, it is accepting of realities. I don't think that is a good argument to allow people to vote. Fair enough. Um, we're almost out of time. I don't think we've done justice at all to, to the discussion Subject, yeah. because, uh, the, you know, the time is such that uh, we have limited ourselves to half an hour for, due to the circumstances. But... Um, we always said when, when we um, arranged this discussion that it would be the first of hopefully several. Um, so hopefully we can invite you both back uh, to discuss <laughs> these issues and more. Uh, but before um, we call it a night, perhaps you can give us some closing thoughts if we can start with you. you uh, James, as, a, as an A-level student, um, what are, your, what are your sort of overriding thoughts on what we've discussed tonight and, and you know, any conclusions that you might have reached? Um, I think tonight we've... I think what's become most evident is the m many facets to this issue and how it's not just a thing that can be resolved in half an hour. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of 16-year-olds particularly, I personally don't see... I'm not convinced particularly. Yeah. What, that, they, that, they'll, that they should be able to vote? That they should be able to vote, yeah, exactly. Okay, but you're, you're open to the I, idea and you'd like to have more discussion absolutely, around Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and what about yourself, Robert? Well, I'm just disgusted that um, nursery school politics amongst the, from the government party has resulted in this debate not being able to uh, be longer and not to be able to be more in-depth. And I suggest to them today that they grow up a little bit and that they also, they have the vote already, Let's think about it carefully before we give the vote to 16-year-olds. OK, well, Robert Vasquez and, uh, and James, thank you ever so much for your time uh, tonight. Uh, Viewpoint will be back next week for a full hour with the com uh, Commander British Forces and uh, we'll be discussing Gibraltar's strategic role uh, among the UK Armed Forces. Thanks a lot for watching from all of us up here at Broadcasting House. Good night. <laughs>